Welcome back for another edition of the Kickoff. We got old Jay Reed back. We're going to talk about the Redskins and the Giants here as they uh, try to salvage the season and fin- finish it off on a respectable note, even though it doesn't look like it's very likely. The oddsmakers have picked them. They're six and a half point underdogs. They're six and a half point dogs? Six and a half wow. point dogs. I mean, you know, obviously, they lost 45 to 10 in their first meeting here. Jay. What are we looking at here? What is left to look at as they finish this season off? Well, I'll tell you, Jonesy, I mean, it's, it's like we've been writing about and talking about for such a long time now. It's about Jay Gruden and Robert Griffin III. Jay Gruden could not make it any clearer. He does not want Robert Griffin III to be his quarterback. But, you know, you see the, you see the bubble back there. The, the guy who built the bubble, Dan Snyder, he's not where Jay Gruden is right now. And that's a big problem for this organization. I mean, they gave Jay Gruden a five-year contract as a rookie head coach. Bruce Allen brought him in here. He didn't want him to leave the building to go take other interviews, so they gave him everything he wanted. And now in his first year, Jay Gruden's first year, he's determined that he can't win with Robert Griffin III. You could argue that, well, he, you know, he, he ran through Robert Griffin III too quickly. He ran through you know, uh, Kirk Cousins too quickly. You can argue all the things you want to argue, but at the end of the day, The Washington Redskins invested five years guaranteed in Jay Gruden, and he's your head coach. And if he says to you, Robert Griffin III can't play, and and remember also, another head coach also told them Robert Griffin III can't play in the pocket. So to me, it's sheer lunacy that you would not back Jay Gruden's play if you're if you're Dan Snyder who you gave him all this money if you're Bruce Allen who who your fingerprints all over bringing this guy in here it's it I mean I've seen a lot of dysfunctional situations at Redskins Park in the time that I've covered this team but this one is the biggest one and and I'll tell you Mike it, it almost Everything that almost happens on the field, well, no, check that. Everything that happens on the field is secondary because this Robert Griffin III, Jay Gruden impasse has paralyzed this franchise. Yeah, and, and swirling over them as, as they try to take the field here, and it looks like Colt McCoy is going to be the guy. Uh, it is very important for Jay Gruden that Colt McCoy plays well because if McCoy plays well, the Redskins are competitive. Even if they can steal a game in these last three, all of them divisional, then Jay Gruden can go into the offseason and say, see, this is what I was telling you. This is what this guy can do on my offense. Let's go with him. Let's build everything else around him. Then we'll worry about the quarterback position later. But if Colt McCoy struggles, then that pressure on Jay Gruden to go back to Robert Griffin will get even bigger. And then Dan Snyder and Bruce Allen have a leg to stand on when they go into the offseason. And they can say, hey, work with our guy here. He is the one we are sticking with. You have to fix him. But we will see what happens, how the offense goes. They did not do well in any facet of the game the last time out. Offense, defense, they've got injuries on defense. Brandon Merriweather. Keenan Robinson, Jason Hatcher, none of them were practicing today on the final day week, uh, final day of the week, and so it looks like they'll be without those three starters. They do look like they're going to get Deshaun Jackson back, which is big for Colt McCoy. I don't know how ugly this thing is going to be. The Redskins are going to try to go out there and steal a game, but we'll find out. We'll see you next week.